Good afternoon. My task is to uh, wake you up from the after lunch dreams. I will try my best. Tempest, it's a uh, rather old phenomenon, and uh, I would like to talk with the new aspects of the Tempest. Let's start from the stove. It's a very nice Hungarian idiom, means uh, you have to begin at the beginning. So I would like to steal data. I would like to steal unencrypted, easy available data. And I would like to remain in the background without any consequences. So I would like to find sources uh, for unencrypted data. Which sources can I identify? The first is the screen. The second one, the keyboard and mouse. Mouse is not so important. Maybe something else, the printer. If I want to print something, I have to send it to the printer, and I cannot use any encryption because printers are unable to decrypt it. Uh, if I use, for example, a print server, the situation is slightly different because between my machine and the print server, the traffic can be encrypted, but from the server to the printer, that USB 2 line must be unencrypted. Can I catch it? I don't know. Uh, if I cannot uh, have physical access to the machine, I have to convince the machine to emanate the data, to radiate the data, and uh, somehow I have to capture it. Which parts of the machine can emanate data? External networks, cables, plugs, printed circuit boards, and the screens. External components. Uh, Wi-Fi is a well-known well uh, problem. WiMAX is a bit better. Bluetooth not so important because a very small amount of data is uh, running on Bluetooth. Uh, connections. Broadband over power lines, an interesting question because in some countries uh, uh, it's a very high heap of the BOP and sometimes it can result uh, unexpected, uh, unexpected uh, uh, effects. I would like to show some. This is an, a New Zealand uh, uh, clip from a radio amateur station. Broadband over power lines is yet another technology to enable the delivery of high-speed data services over the power distribution system. And this video gives an audible and visual demonstration of this technology's potential for interference to the high-frequency radio spectrum. It is currently being trialled in North Hobart, which is a suburb of the capital city of Hobart. We're heading over Burnett Street traffic lights along Argyle Street in a northerly direction and we are about to enter the North Hobart BPL trial area. In this video I am using standard mobile amateur radio equipment and no audio or video manipulation has been used. The signal meter superimposed at the top of the screen provides an indication of signal strength that is being received on the 80 metre amateur band. Mid-range on this signal meter is what amateurs call an S9 signal strength, and this is a very high signal level. The BPL and interference that, that can sound now be is heard your data. is consistently above the S9 level throughout the North Hobart BPL trial area, as this video will demonstrate. This BPL trial is being run by Aurora Energy, the local power retailer, and its telecommunication arm, Tastel. The BPL system used in this trial is manufactured by Mitsubishi and it utilises the DS2 BPL chipset. We turn into Ride Street past the North Hobart football oval and the BPL interference level continues well above the extreme S9 level. Radio amateurs or hams are licensed users of certain parts of the radio spectrum who have passed assessments regulated by the Australian Communications and Media Authority to prove competency in operating radio equipment. So, uh, 
as you could hear, your data were emanated on a broadband line, and you only have to capture that, that signal and decrypt it, and uh, you have all of the data processed. Cable networks, it's not so interesting for us because uh, uh, mostly shielded, mostly twisted, mostly transfer encrypted data, so I don't want to deal with it because it's too hard to hack it. Keyboard, unencrypted signal, but not too much data, but I can capture user IDs, passwords, so maybe it can be interesting. Plugs, this is a military computer with shielded uh, plugs and uh, very small active surface is available, so uh, not so hopeful to get any signal from this machine. Printed circuit board. Hard to select the appropriate signal because there is a chaotic mixture of uh, different electronic signals. So we, maybe we should focus on the USB cable. USB cable is important because when I send data to a printer, I must send unencrypted data. The only problem is when the USB standards were established, the developers uh, was thinking about the electromagnetic emanation. That means that they built a so-called slew rate control into the circuits. I try to explain it. The normal USB 2 signal is something like that on the corner. It seems to be a rather clear signal, but due to the slew rate control, it's not a square wave signal anymore. It's uh, almost sinusoidal. That means that I will not have harmonics. I only will have the basic signal, so it will be hard to capture it. Maybe next year. But the display was radiating, and uh, it was discovered very soon. And it got a code name, the Tempest. Tempest means there was a, a very simple configuration from Infanec. The radiation of the screen can be captured with an antenna, can be amplified and sent to a normal TV. And uh, the TV screen will show the same picture as my monitor, though it will be monochromic. How does it work? In the monitor, we have an electron gun, and the electronic beam will start from the gun and uh, will be accelerated, deflected, and will be hit the screen. During this run, the electron beam means a definite current, and that current will uh, result in electromagnetic emanation. The beam will visit pixel by pixel the whole screen. Finally, at the end of a line, it will run back, and at the end of the screen, there will be a longer flyback signal, and these effects make easy to synchronize my TV to the monitor. And the antenna, which can emanate the signal, will be the beam itself. So, let's give it a try. That was uh, a newer version of the Van Eck configuration with a PC and an analog digital converter and so on. So we tried to apply the modern technology to reproduce the picture. The result was something like that. Not so nice, but why? 
the necessary frequencies to reproduce the picture pixel by pixel can be seen here. It's a very, very, very high frequency, and our equipment uh, may not be able to do that. For example, if I connect it to the PC, uh, the fastest part of uh, the external connections were uh, uh, the line printer parallel interface, and it was too slow. You can see the maximal speed was 500 uh, kilo samples. It's about five megabit per second. And the radio side was much more critical because uh, the bandwidth of the radio significantly slower than the necessary transfer rate. In the reality, uh, the situation is a bit more worse because if you can see a simple, very simple black and white uh, screen shows that uh, the current swings about three times high, higher frequency than uh, the pixel frequency. It's a very important thing because we will find something very similar at the TFT monitors. In this case, uh, the reason for that swinging is uh, the colorfulness because in the CRT tube, there are shadow mask or slot mask or trinitron uh, uh, configuration, but there are three uh, separated electronic gun in the tube and uh, the currents will be summarized. If uh, the pixel current would be a real square wave, we could describe it with uh, the Fourier sequence, and it would show something like this. But in the reality, due to the three different uh, color signals, it will be something like this. The basic frequencies almost disappear, and the third, fourth, and sixth harmonics will be higher, so uh, Fourier equation is not uh, usable anymore. This is a radiation chart of some video cards. So, if we want to reproduce the keep, uh, screen, we have to use uh, a receiver which is able, which is able uh, to cover a fairly wide band from 150 megahertz to 650. It's very high frequency and very wide bandwidth. PC will be too slow for this procession, and we need a much better radio than a normal communication receiver. And uh, probably we have to use a digital signal processing. What does it mean a good radio? It has to cover the whole frequency band. It can be a low noise version, sensitive version. And uh, we need a proper output level. The bandwidth is, uh, bandwidth is uh, essential. So it's very hard to find something like that. Uh, you have to build it, and it needs uh, special instrumentations and uh, practice. The first stage of the radio uh, should mix the signal, the incoming signal, with the local signal, and uh, produce the baseband level. The level was be emanated by the monitor. If I have the baseband signal, I can reproduce the screen. What else should we do? Uh, this is the signal. I have uh, orientation points. The blanking signal when uh, 
the deflection system from the end of the line runs back to the beginning of the next line. In addition, I will have a so-called like line uh, sync signal. This will be uh, a high impulse for uh, the deflection system on the receiver side. I will be able to use it uh, to synchronize uh, my uh, other device. And there will be a longer flyback signal after the end of the whole screen. What else can we do? We need a better antenna. Antenna means uh, something which, which is oriented. The better the orientation of the antenna, more exactly I can target uh, the display from I want to, to steal the picture. A better radio and high-speed digital signal processing. Those components are available for example, this configuration can be ordered from the Texas Instruments. It's about $50. But that was only the past, and we saw that uh, the Tempest phenomenon disappeared with the CRT displays. But no. This is a TFT display, as we know. And if we go closer, it seems that uh, every dot is one pixel, right? But every pixel is a TFT array, an array of uh, transistors, something like that. That means that when I write my data to the display, I select a gate line, this gate line will define a row on the display. Then I select the data line one by one. Three data lines will drive one single pixel, the three transistors. And the data lines and the gate lines were crossed, that uh, TFT transistors will be excited. This exciter pulse will result a very strong and very well-defined uh, emanation. Have you ever seen something similar? Yes, the DRAMs working on that way on the column address is about the same as the gate line, and the row address is about the same as the data line. If you turn it with 19 degrees, you can find the same architecture. What does it mean? Uh, when I illuminate a color pixel, the appropriate transistor will be excited. Excited means it will draw a fairly high current. That fairly high current will, will result a very strong impulse. That impulse will be emanated. And the emanated pulse can be captured. The speed range, due to it's very similar to the DRAM, the frequency range also will be the similar. But as we have three transistors on one pixel, we have uh, to look for the second, fourth, and six harmonics, because those will be emanated. So the frequency range is uh, moved from a higher range, and we have to find the signals there. And uh, Tempest is a very critical thing, so uh, there are companies uh, for measuring the tempest proofness, the level of radiation of the different machines. And the other side, we try uh, to hack the tempest proof qualified machines. 
I would like to show you a short, short uh, demo. I need a playlist. I need some technical help. So you can see a screen with an animated GIF. A very simple printed board antenna, cable, and the box, and another screen which is copies the previous one only in black and white. So the configuration is very simple. We know about everything in this company. Uh, uh, configuration except that flat box on the right hand side. That one. that. So, the flat box with the cooling fan is a so-called software-defined radio. A special radio receiver which works very different way as we used to think about radios. Software-defined radio means uh, in the first stage I mix the signal, the incoming signal with the local signal, push it back to the baseband, digitize it, and process with computing methods. That means uh, the whole uh, decryption or demodulation procedure will be done on software way, and it will be uh, controlled by a user port or USB port. So this very simple, simple look radio will be able to do the task without having instrumentation, without, without having uh, soldering iron. We only have a proper control program. It's a bit special because this box is uh, covering the frequency brain, uh, band from 1 kilohertz to 3 gigahertz. It's very, very wide band, and it can cover it in one single step. It can recover the base band, and it can be controlled by a USB port. Of course, they had a very good antenna, the antenna itself is that four sleeves. The external part is only a mechanic part uh, to position the antenna. And in the head of the antenna, there is a preamplifier and a polarization switch. And now we can move the screen away and uh, we can reproduce it. The picture, of course, uh, will be monochrome. The artificial colors illustrate the signal strength. And the horizontal face of uh, the image has to be corrected manually because the synchronous signals are very weak. In the conventional deflection systems, there was a fairly long uh, flyback delay because the inductance of the deflection system needed it. But in this case, we don't have a long flyback, so flyback, 
so it's harder to find the synchrome poses. The processing program averaged 10 consecutive frames. The receiving frequency is 1.29 gigahertz. These are the normal controls, contrast brightness, the offset of the screen, the number of frames averaged. This way I can reduce the noise, the effect of the noise coming from the receiver side. And you can see uh, the frame frequencies on the target was not exactly the, pre, uh, the standard. It was a slightly different. And the resolution was very high. Line frequency was not the standard value, but very close to it. But these uh, differences can be uh, compensated manually. So it's to, it seems to be a very good uh, tool uh, to capture screens from distance, over walls, windows, so it's a bit uh, dangerous. But it's a very expensive tool. That receiver uh, was about $18,000. That custom-made antenna was about $10,000. The program is free, <laughs> open source, but uh, for playing hacker, it's a bit pricey tool. Is there something uh, less expensive? Oh, let's uh, watch the TV. If you browse the internet, you can find that uh, DVB-T receivers are not too pricey and uh, available on eBay or anything else. Uh, and those are also SDR receivers, especially programmed for DVB-T reception. The price range is between 10 and $20, so not a really high price. And the bandwidth is rather high because one transport stream for DVB-T is 8 megahertz. The modern uh, USB dongles can process up to eight transport streams. That means eight times eight, 64 megahertz bandwidth, it's more than enough. In addition, during the manufacturing, the manufacturer have uh, to check every chips. So the DVB-T chip has a so-called test mode. If you can activate the test mode, it will forget the DVB-T standard, the frequency limits, and you can freely program it. So you will have an SDR receiver for $10. You have to select uh, so chip, which is able to cover a very wide band. For example, the RTL 2832 is a very good one. And uh, not too expensive because uh, when I bought it, it was $15. This is the dongle itself. And if the bandwidth is not enough or the coverage is not enough, you can uh, add external converters and you can extend the reception uh, band from DC to 3 gigahertz. Then you have to connect it to your PC. In this case, you will have a DBBT uh, uh, TV receiver with the remote control. You can use your PC as a TV, but uh, we would like to do something else. There is an open source driver, the Zadig 
driver, which can turn the chipset to test mode. With that driver, your PC can give the reception frequency and the bandwidth for the chipset, and it will work on that way. In addition, you need a good antenna. You can order it from Prague from, for $10,000, or you can buy on eBay. It's a printed circuit board antenna for $15. For our purpose, is as good as uh, the higher price one. And uh, you have to install a special program which can uh, give the parameters for the USB dongle and can drive it. One of the most popular ones is uh, the HD-SDR program. Now it's working in this frequency range. These are broadcasting stations. And here is the modulation of the station. We can see the band we are receiving, the signal strength. So we can select which is the best one. And we can use now the PC as a radio, not as a TV. We can select the method of the demodulation AM, FM, digital method, lower sideband, upper sideband, DRM. And there is one more special, the CV. What does it mean, CV? Continuous wave. The radio is uh, radiating continuous signal, and I don't want to deal with the, the modulation. I need only the signal itself. So I selected uh, an FM radio station. This is the emanated signal. You can see that uh, the wideband signal is coming in into the device. We can see the modulation here. There is a fast Fourier transformation of the signal. At present, uh, I don't want to use it. But uh, it shows that every parameter of uh, the radiated signal is available with this simple open source program. Let's talk about the CV. If I select the CV demodulation method, the radio signal will be converted down to the baseband. I will get back the baseband signal. That was my primary aim, to get back the baseband so-called envelope, the coverage of the signal. And from that point, it's only programming, because if you have the baseband signal, uh, you can uh, detect the synchron signals, and you can recover pixel by pixel the original screen, the original picture. From this point of view, if you look at this uh, building, it's uh, an office building. It's a real security nightmare because I buy an antenna for $15. I buy a preamplifier for $20. I buy a USB dongle for $15. It's about 50 together. I download the uh, proper driver and uh, SDR control program to, to my machine. And I am sitting in the coffee house and I harvesting your data without any track remaining in the background. It's very hard to discover that something is reading your screen. And I will collect all of your data. 
So that's the tempest. Where can I obtain these components? The USB dongle is on eBay. I recommend uh, buying the RTL 2832 because it's very versatile. There is one weak point of these dongles. If you connect an external antenna, uh, the incoming signal will be higher than uh, expected by the developers. And uh, the electrostatic dis discharge can uh, damage the chipset. In the RTL 2832, there is a protection diode pair on the input, and it can protect the chipset from electrostatic discharge without uh, reducing uh, uh, the sensitivity. Logarithmic periodic antenna. It's also available on eBay. I prefer to buy the so-called asymmetric version because you can use it with a, with a preamplifier. That it's easy to connect it to a preamplifier. You don't have to deal with extra cables, extra transformers, uh, balance transformers, and so on. So you need an asymmetric output antenna. It's between 10 and $20, not a big deal. SDR control programs, the most popular in the radio amateur uh, area, the HDSDR. The other one, I don't prefer it. It's not so uh, convenient that uh, the HDSDR, the SDR sharp, the name means that it's supported with, with uh, one company. And Zedic driver is open source and available for almost every operating system from Macintosh to Linux, of course, Windows. For Windows users, uh, the Zedic driver has a special version for Windows XP because XP works a bit different than other Windowses. So thank you for your patience. That was my presentation. <laughs>